I am going to tell you the story to the best of my ability of Rabbi Zev Wolf Leiter, my father, a renowned Goyen and Boki who lived from 1891 to 1974. As a child, he was privileged to grow up in the city of Lvov, Zavalov. His mother and father were very learned and dedicated people. Abnos Nota, his father, was known as a tremendous Ilui and was the dying in Zalozitz. As time passed by, he became dying in Zalozitz. He was kind of a reputation, he acquired a reputation as being a tremendous dying. Even in his youth, he had a name as a, what they call an Ilui, a prodigy of tremendous capacities. So much so that by the time he was nine years old, his parents received a visit from one of the notable people of the time, a Dian in Belts, a Briar, a Dubit Briar, who came to see him and test him. And once he was satisfied with the test, he made up with Rabbi Nosinata father, Rab David Doiv, lighter, that he would become the Hassan, his son-in-law, and he made Tanoim with him, conditions whereby he would be engaged to his daughter. She was ten, and he was nine. But he was afraid somebody might grab this genius. Some years later, Abnasen Nata married her. He was about around 20, I believe. And as mentioned in my father's memoirs, the, fa the memoirs of Rabbi Zevo, Le Ro Kalosoi Ad Yom Chuposoi. He did not see his wife-to-be, to whom he was already engaged for quite some time, until the day of their marriage. But their marriage was quite successful. They got along quite well. They had similar backgrounds, they had similar desires, similar upbringing, and uh, it was quite all right. They raised a family of several children, and one of them was Zev Wolf Leiter, my father, who later on became known as one of the great Goinim of that time, and arguably one of the greatest Bikiim in the past 120 years. Rab Meir Ark, Rab Yosef Engel, and Rab Steinberg, the brother Rob, they were the big three. My father knew all of them, and they all held very, very much of him. What do I mean? I mean that uh, when it came to giving smicha, he received smicha from uh, Rabbi uh, Meir Ark, who praised him highly. Uh, Rabbi Yosef Engel used to give shiurim in Vienna during the first beginning of the First World War. And he pointed on one occasion to him during a shear, that is, to Rabbi Zev Wolf Leiter, and he said, well, you're a Jew who knows the Talmud, entire Talmud, with the commentary of the Tosavists. In addition, my father would refer to Rabbi Yosef Engel in his swarm that he wrote later as a... Moiri Verabi, he bestowed that title on him, and he felt very close to him. And also he told me that when Rav Yosef Engel gave a shear 
to the assembled of several hours in Wien, in Vienna, during that war period of the First World War, it was like he poured out an entire safer in the space of only a few hours. To look at him was to see something absolutely out of the ordinary. The tsura of the person was such that it was overwhelming. You knew right away this was not just another human being. This was something very, very special. He had a relationship also with Rabbi Steinberg from before the war. When he was 15 and a half, he went to see him. He used to visit with Gidolim to speak in and learning and on issues. And Rabbi Steinberg was very, very much impressed with him. He spoke to Rabbi Steinberg about the Urayim, in which he had looked up quite a bit of material because he knew that Rabbi Steinberg had prepared a major work on the Urayim, a region of great consequence. And later on, when one of the grandchildren of Rabbi Steinberg came to America after the Second World War and wrote to my father, Rabbi Zelvov Leiter, he would include there a statement from his grandfather that is Rabbi Steinberg, the author of the major work uh, of Chuvis and one of the big three. Uh, Rabbi Steinberg spoke more than once about the greatness coming from this young man who he had met, Rabbi Zebul Fleiter, with Beshevach Tehilo Bemido Merubo he writes in the letter. In other words, with an exceptional degree of praise. And more than once. Interestingly enough, this grandson, who became the rabbi in charge of the Gittin questions at the RCA in America, proceeded in that same letter to write of several pages of Torah. What were they? Well, it seems like Rabbi Wolf Leiter, when he was in, before he was 16, had written a tshuva, a response to Menachem Mendel Steinberg, the rabbi abroad, who he had visited, and who had sent him some haoris, some notes, some hasogis, some arguments, some which he had raised on Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Leiter's original tshuva on the issue of Chometz over al Pesach and the first portion, the first uh, chalik of the Beis Dovid. It was a very interesting tshuva. A lot of people wrote on it. But in any case, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Steinberg had written some issues that he had with it. And Rabbi Wolf Leiter responded, I have received your letter and I have looked at it and I am now sitting down to write. And then he proceeds to unload a tremendous amount of Bikiyas on that issue. And it was on this tshuva where Rabbi Leiter was just barely 16 years old and had addressed to one of the three greatest luminaries of Galicia that the grandson of Rabbi Menachem Mendel Steinberg sent into Rabbi Leiter after the Second World War some of his views on this issue and no doubt took up the cudgels defending the views of his grandfather. These people, you must understand, this is the way they lived. 
from one generation to the next generation, from decades in the past to decades in the future, they were always holding in the middle of Torah and Torah discussions. It's an interesting highlight. In any case, Rabbi Zevold Fleiter, my, grand, uh, my father, was already obviously a great prodigy when he was very young. His parents, who I mentioned before, Rabbi Nassim was his father and his mother also, Briar. She taught him the generations by the time he was three all the way down to the end of Bias Shani, I believe. When he was six, he was learning Gemara and going to the Beis HaMedrash, to the synagogue, and reciting by heart the first six or seven folios of the Talmud Gittin. And on his return, he did the same. And while he was in the synagogue, he would be dancing and prancing on the benches and reciting this beautiful Gabora that he loved so much. Rabbi Zebul Fleiter, my father, Olava Shalom, he also had a connection with Rabbi Menachem Mendel Steinberg, who was the brother of, okay, and he, together with Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Engel and Rabbi Merak, was one of the big three, the major halachic decisors in Galicia after the Masham. Now brought down in the Sefer Encyclopedia Talmudis, excuse me, the Encyclopedia Lechachma Galicia is a picture of him taking somebody drew this. He didn't allow photographic too much. And in here it's mentioned about Rabbi Avram Menachem Mendel Steinberg that he wrote many, many works of Torah. Chedushim on the Bavli Talmud, the Yerushalmi, thousands of tshuvas, and it notes here, Hitir, Yoter, Marboas, Alofim, Agunot. A few years after my graduation from there, and I happened to be home, then I was out in the yeshivas in New York, my father told me the following that a gentleman around the corner who had a store where he used to sell chazer out in the open of the windows, ham hocks, etc. He had come to him, he was Jewish. He had gone through the war. Who knows what he went through. But he had a daughter who happened to be in the same class that I was in in high school. And she had married a young man who was a teacher in the public school system of Pittsburgh. And this gentleman, albeit he was no longer, how should we say, very, very observant. He was selling, you know, tarpus right in the front of the Jewish neighborhood, whatever, whatever Jewish neighborhood there was then in, in Squirrel Hill. came to him and said, you know, I'm worried about my daughter if she'll remarry and she'll have a child. It'll be a mamzer. He knew that. He remembered that from his youth in Europe. He didn't mind the chazer or even selling it, but he didn't want to have a little mamzer as a grandchild. <laughs> What could my father do for this man? Well, he told me what he did. He said, uh, I'll see what I can do. And he picked up the phone and spoke to the head of the Board of Education in Pittsburgh. And this, you've got to remember, is back in the early, mid-50s, maybe. And he explained to him this moral dilemma over here that was coming into play. And the way this man's refusal to give a Jewish divorce was going to wreak havoc 
on a family and this young woman's life and, and the whole family. Well, in those days, you know, things like that, we didn't have so many uh, justifications for liberal uh, ideas and free choice and who knows what else people can come up with. The young man, the teacher, gave the get. He gave the Jewish divorce. And in the end, or soon after and throughout his life, the largest reformed congregation in Pittsburgh with almost 3,000 families, with a rabbi who was in charge before Rabbi Freehoff and during Rabbi Freehoff's tenure, who's well known as a, one of the icons of the reform movement, they would send people for a Jewish divorce to Rabbi Leiter. They understood what had to be done. Rabbi Leiter explained to them the importance of keeping the Jewish people together. I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some people today who are grandchildren who came out of these kosher divorces, that is where the partner was remarried, the woman was remarried, they could be teaching in B'nai Brak today, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. But there are dozens and dozens of such cases. In the early 40s, Rabbi Henkin, Rabbi Joseph Henkin, wrote to Rabbi Leiter that he, had, he was sending him a check for $3 for the work that his, Rabbi Wolf Leiter's father, Rabbi Nosenota, had put out in Europe. It was sent to him, it was printed much earlier, of course, by that time he was no longer in the world. But his work, Ma'orot Notan, which he wrote and printed back in the mid-30s, Rabbi Nosen Notan, was a major uh, piece of uh, uh, response in terms of it dealt with many, many day-to-day -day problems. Uh, he also asked my father that I would like to know your opinion regarding Jewish divorce. And Rabbi Henkin was quite a luminary, and in that area he was also considered a man of the first rank, a decisor. He wanted to know, Rabbi Leiter, what do you think of this idea that we should ask the powers that be, the courts here in the United States, not to give a civil divorce until the Jewish divorce was already taken care of, okay? That the woman was free, in other words. She would not be an aguna. Achaka lechuvosei haromso. I await your elevated reply. But I want to tell you that during the period that he grew up, to give you an idea of what an astounding, phenomenal genius he was. And this has nothing to do with the rest of us lighters. Believe me, you don't get too, you don't get too many people. You may, you're lucky if you get one person like that and a whole mishpacha for 10 generations. But be that as it may. Rabbi Leiter, already I mentioned to his, his issues with Iguna and divorce and how interested he was in that tractate. Well, take a look at this. This is the book that Rabbi Leiter put together before the age of 13. The Divrei Chachomim. He made the, he made the title page himself, by the way. Well, in the end of the book, he brings down things that he discussed on, this, in this, on the tractate, 
with people who are great, great scholars. And he wrote back and forth with them. Amongst them was the, uh, was the rabbi from Brajan, in other words, the Marsham, and other Gedolim. You can see it's the you can see the Ksab here when he was he was, he was Matik. He was Matik. His letters and the discussion with them. He was very young. He was not yet Bar Mitzvah. It should also be noted that in this very self same book, Rabbi Leiter wrote down fifteen general principles in the area of get. 15 Klolem. His knowledge was so all-encompassing, he could write down general principles that would be upheld throughout the Talmudic literature and the attendant literature of Responsa, as well as the Torah of the Rishonim and Achronim.